All right, guys, so here we are. Um, got a new task for you. We're going to start playing around with some particle systems in Maya. And we're going to start this by using a scene that you already have constructed. Um, if you don't have the scene constructed, then you can easily make a couple of uh, containers uh, and be able to kind of experience what this effect looks like and how to make it. So. Um, one of the first things that we're going to do is start off with our um, kind of goblet or a bowl. Um, the choice is yours. You can you can use whichever one you want. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start to create um, just kind of a simple bowl or cylinder type type object. And the way that we did this before was using the curve tools and uh, creating this from like a side view and um, then doing a revolve. Uh, surface deformation on it and or modifier on it to create the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and go through that process and start to um, build up a simple uh, bowl container here. That way we have something to contain these uh, particles that uh, we'll be creating. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. So once I come back, I'll have that finished. Okay, so I created my bowl, and now that I have that done, um, you're gonna notice that it's over here as a revolved surface, because I went up here after I created that, that curve, um, I went up here and went to revolve, and it completed the form for me. Now, check out your object and make sure that everything looks good, because um, what you're gonna see here in this case, there's a couple little holes that just kind of happen in my object here. Um, now, if I go to close those holes, you'll see that when I right click, I don't have the normal um, poly object mode. So what I have to do is actually take this object here and modify it and convert it to a poly, All right? So now I have basically two objects on top of each other. I have a poly and I have this revolved surface. Um, so what I want to do is take this poly and I'm going to move it over. And this right here, once I have it highlighted, I see that this is my revolved surface. I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to take out this curve too. I don't need that. And I'm just going to move this right back to the center. Um, if I wanted to be picky about it, then I can go over here and um, zero it out. It's right in the middle. Um, so I've got my surfaces here and everything looks pretty good. Um, no holes on my poly surface uh, because it kind of goes through and fills it out once I turn that into a poly. So that's good news about that. I don't have to worry about that. And when I right click on it, I can see I have edge vertex, um, object mode and all the faces, all the things that I need that I'm used to here. So um, I'm just going to go back to object mode there. And now I've got a surface here. You can also do this another way. If you wanted to create like a glass or something, you can do that pretty easily just using a, um, a cylinder and modifying that into an object. Now it does have to have walls to it. So these tend to work better when you have um, some thickness to the edges of your objects rather than it just being a single plane. So um, if you're doing something like this, let me move this out of the way. And I'll do another example. Let's say I want to do a cylinder object and I want to take this object and modify it into like a cup. That's fine. I can do that. I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to move this up. And what I'm going to do here is take this object, go into the attribute editor, um, go into the shape itself. And I'm going to take this down to zero. I want zero caps on the top. I'm going to go into face mode. And I'm going to delete this face. And then what I'm going to do is go into um, edge mode and double click on this outer ring. Actually, well, choose it first. There we go. Double click on the on one of the edges on the top ring here. And what I'm going to do is actually extrude. So I'm going to go to um, actually. I'm I'm just going to control E. Control E takes me to um, extrude. And what I want to make sure is that I want to keep faces together. So I'm going to do yes on that. And then I'm going to extrude this inwards. 
create kind of a, a wall area there. And then I'm going to click off. Um, I'm going to double click again on that ring. I'm going to control E for extrude, keep faces together. And so I'm going to drop it down low. Sounds like I'm dancing or something. I don't know. Um, but there I am. And I'm going to um, now close this hole. So I need to find uh, my mesh here and fill hole. And there you go. Now I have a walled object from a cylinder. So you see how it's not just one plane um, on the outside. Now it's got a double walled, which works out really good. So that's another option that you can do um, this technique with. You can change the materials of this, obviously. You can make it into a glass and so on. So um, with that done, I'm going to just slide. Whoop. I'm going to put it into object mode first and then slide this out of the way. Um, and I'm going to put this back towards the middle, zero this out. Now I'm ready to go. All right, so I've got an object here. I want to hold some, um, I'm gonna scale this down because <laughs> you start working with particles and things get to be pretty complicated and rendering and the, map, the actions that happen with uh, working with particles can be kind of, uh, um, I guess, um, taxing on your computer. So I've got my object here. I'm going to now start to create my um, particle fix. So I'm gonna to go to change my, my window, my mode here into FX. And what I wanna do is go to particles and I'm gonna create an emitter. And you see when I do that, it creates three things actually. It creates an emitter, it creates um, particle, and it creates a nucleus. So I'm going to start with the emitter and I'm going to move this up just a tiny bit. And that is going to be the thing where all my particles kind of are born from. So that's going to be very important. So I'm going to go into my attributes for this emitter and go through some of the things um, that we're going to play around with. Um, first, let's just check out what this does. Um, oops. Let's play this through. And you'll see that it starts to emit particles, right? And it's going to play as long as I have my timeline set up. So I'm going to stop that, go back. And I'm going to set this for about 500. Um, and then I play. And you see it showers right through my bowl here, which is fine. And you see it's still going and going and going and going and going. Um, now, I can change the way that emits. Um, by looking at the emit type or emitter type, I can go directional and do that. And you see it just kind of focuses on one particular area. Um, I can also change the rate or particles per second that are being emitted. Um, and I can go to surface, change the emitter there, see what that does. It doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go back, Let's see if it plays again. Nope. All right. So um, curve, volume, pretty much um, omni is what we typically use. Um, and then we can adjust how that plays out later. So you can say, okay, I want a lot, I want 200, I want 500, I want whatever that many particles coming out, or I want just 16 per second, okay? So you can totally adjust how many, coming out of your emitter at one time. So I'm gonna put it back at about 120. Um, minimum distance, and these are things that you can play around with. Um, basically, the amount of space that it, it emits from. So it's from a very tiny, tiny space actually. Um, From that emitter um, max you see now it, based on the location of your emitter it's saying max different distance is three units and so you'll see that from this point it, it's stretching out to a little over three units as it emits from that space there um, so there's different ways that you can modify this to do the thing do what you want uh, one thing, though, is that I'm noticing is that it's not going to really work out too well if everything just keeps flying through my container. 
um, because what we want there to be are some sort of physics that where these things work together. So let's stop this and let's choose this object here, whatever it might be. It could be your goblet, could be glass, could be a bowl that you create on you know a tabletop surface. And what I'm going to do is actually go to with that chosen. I'm going to go to end cloth, even though it's not a cloth. Um, that's just the way that it's categorized here. And I'm going to create a passive collider. And what that's doing is telling me now that this is a rigid object and it has it is enabled to collide uh, on the face of this object. So I can do vertex or a or edge, uh, but face is going to be what we're looking for. So now when I go to play, you can see now, hey, those things are no longer going through my object. Now it's going and settling on top of my object. Um, so there we have that. Um, now, that seems to be working right. So let's take a look at um, back at our emitter and let's look at some other options here that we have. I'm gonna go to particle shape. I'm gonna go to count. Um, so as I play this along and I stop it, it's gonna say, okay, at this point I have 260. Just know that as this keeps building up, this is more and more rendering that your computer is having to do. So the more particles you do, it's very taxing on your computer because it's having to render all of this out. Um, so let's take a look here and actually see what this looks like as we create a rendering of this. So I'm going to create a couple lights and I'm going to put a, a, a platform, you know, kind of a, a surface down um, that can work as uh, something to bounce some light off of. And I'm going to create a um, physical sky in my background here. And that way, when I go to create kind of a rendering, um, let's see what this looks like. I'm going to do a little test render here. OK, so you see now what I've done that. It does render the particles, but they're little, little, small little dots, right? Um, so there's not much to look at there. Another thing you can do is actually do IPR, and it kind of gives you a quicker, rougher kind of rendering. You can see it a little bit faster, and plus it lets you, you know, you can stop it and um, close this out when you're done. That way you don't have to wait for a whole scene to render in one image. Um, so that's what we have here. I'm looking at these objects now. Um, and I can give it a lifespan. I want them to live forever. Otherwise, what you can do is um, uh, make it a, a more specific lifespan where um, maybe they live for a frame or two frames or 10 frames. Um, that's totally up to you how you want that to look. So you can change that. But I have them living for forever. Uh, particle size. You'll see that the particle size is set at 0.2 and you start to make them larger. Um, it doesn't really change the way this looks right here, um, but it might change the way that it looks in the rendering as your particles start to look a little bigger. So we've got things like that happening. Um, let's see here. I need to get back to my emitter here. Um, you start getting larger and it gets, bit, gets to be quite a bit tougher to, um, um, to render. Um, I can, you can make them self collide to where that when they do, I'm gonna go up here and since I'm just kind of demoing this, um, I'm going to rewind and play this. I have them self colliding. So if they bounce into each other, you can see what happens now. Um, it, they, they're colliding like crazy. And so you can tame that down some um, and you can lower the strength of their collision. Um, so it's not so crazy. Um, you can kind of adjust how you want them to collide and how you want them to behave with each other. Um, self collide with scale. And you can give them a little bit more strength, I guess. Um, and then you can give them some bounce. You know, maybe they're bouncing off of each other more. And that's fine, too. Friction, stickiness. You can self-collide different iterations. So maybe they, they bump into each other like four times, and then they stop. 
Um, or you can make it a little bit more active and bump it up to where they're more um, interactive with each other and bouncing around even more. So about 10 is okay, I guess. Um, don't want to get too crazy with it. Now, I'm going to jump past some of these things because uh, actually, let's look at dynamic properties. Um, you could have wind, you could have gravity as well with your um, in your scene, which we'll get to later, but you can have a wind effect and kind of change the way that it is um, kind of forces your particles to move X, Y, Z. And so if you add a, uh, a wind from the X, you know, let's say I do a one here. Um, let me stop that and replay. Um, oops, I did not put a one there. Let's say I put a one here and see how they start to kind of wander off to one side a little bit. Um, let's go back and play. Um, let's do a two here. You can kind of see a little bit how they're starting to go off to the side a little bit. Now you can really ex get extreme with that and um, show a lot more wind if you wanted to and it goes off to the side see how they're all kind of pushed off to that side and so there's a plus and a negative um, if you want it to go the other way on the x-axis you can do that as well um, i'm just going to keep it at zero um, so we have um, dynamic weights mass you can give them like different mass types and that um, so let's look at what i'm interested in here is shading and now they're showing up as points, right? And so I'm going to play a few of these. They're bouncing around, having a good time. All right, great. I can change this to multi-point, which means they're going to, um, they're, for every one, there's going to be three so sides. So there's, there's that. You can do numeric. You can have random numbers flying around, very matrix-like. Um, points, again, um, multi streaks, which is good if you're doing something like sparks, which would be kind of cool. Sparklers have that kind of effect. Um, spheres, ooh. Um, so let's look at streaks actually. I want to show you multi streaks just to get an idea of what that looks like. So here I have streaks, and let's do a quick rendering. And it doesn't quite render it to look like streaks, and that's fine. It's too much for it to try to think about right now. Um, if you were to do a full rendering, it would probably show. Uh, so let's see here, we have um, point spheres. So if I look at spheres and open that up, you can see they look kind of blobby and circular and that's cool. Um, you can change, you know, what they look like as well, as, as, as well as their size. Um, sprites, um, streaks, does this one do it? Uh, maybe, maybe this one will do it. Did streaks do it. Streak still shows up as little points. And then blobby surface. Looks a lot like spheres. Um, but these have a different dynamic to them, um, which we'll see later. So if I go to do this, look how they just kind of all, they're like just piling on top of each other, inside of each other. It's kind of weird. Um, looks like a bunch of weird mashed potatoes. Um, and if I go to um, render this, See what that looks like. Kind of have like a blobby surface to it. So they don't look like a bunch of individual spheres anymore. It looks like a bunch of, like it's morphing into a bigger and bigger blob, which is kind of cool. And that's kind of what we're going to play around with is this kind of blobby stuff. All right. So what we have to do is make sure that these things, you see how they're kind of piling on top of each other. What we want to do is fix that because if I go to press four, I see my wireframe, what's happening. They're just kind of blobbing all into one big giant pool of blobbiness. I don't know. Um, so what we have to do is fix that. And um, let's go back here and make sure that self collide is on so that's one thing we want to make sure of another thing is make sure that your self collide with scale is turned up to maybe one or so i'm going to make this one as well and now i'm going to rewind and play and now they actually kind of react with each other and you see all they're piling up now 
And so if I go to take this and, oh, they're boiling over and check it out, now it just looks like a big blobby mess of stuff, right? Um, now you can, now it's going and going and going. And so let's get some dripping over and let's check what that looks like. See how they're kind of uh, blobbing together and you'll see like some, some interesting um, formations happening here, um, almost like a lava lamp type effect, which is kind of cool. Um, as you see them kind of boil over, I guess, in a way. Um, now there's one thing we hadn't talked about here and it's nucleus and you look at the nucleus and you have gravity here. Um, when I click on this, I look over here, gravity is set to 9.8. That's, that's real, right? That's real, like, um, physics there. Um, there's essentially like the speed of gravity. Um, uh, gravity direction is at negative one, which is what you want, right? So if you change gravity to one um, and let's rewind and play, oh my goodness, everything's flying upwards now and it goes on to for like affinity. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, there's these balls like meshing out of each other. It's kind of cool. Um, but this is you know, this is reality. So let's go back to negative one. This is almost like wind, but it's gonna have like a drag downward. So if you wanted to go um, in the X direction, you know, plus one and play, see how it just like piles off to one side, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of cool actually. Um, that's something worth playing around with later. Um, air density, wind speed, again, you have more wind speed. So if you have a wind direction, you have that capability to play, um, you know, the maker in this case, I guess you can say there's a wind direction of, of one in this, in this case, which you don't need any wind direction. I don't know why that's on there. I was probably playing around with it earlier and that's why I'm getting that showing up now. So this is kind of what we're playing with. And you can also, um, assign these guys, um, material. So if you go to end particles, um, you can right click on them assign a new material to it and let's add a shader to it. I'm going to just do an AI standard surface shader. And now that I have that pulled up, I can go into presets and play around with like different things. Um, ooh, this can get pretty gory as I'm reading some of the things that's on here. Frosted glass looks pretty cool. Glass, gold. Oh, that'd be kind of neat too. Um, milk, mm, rubber skin. Ooh. <laughs> I can imagine what some of these would look like, but I'm going to go to replace it with glass and see what this looks like. Um, obviously, it's not going to show up here. Um, in fact, this takes a long time for it to fill up. So what I might do is either scale down my bowl or scale up my um, my particles here to see what um, see if I can get this to fill up a little bit faster than what it is. Um, so I think it's going to be easier for me to um, scale my bulb down a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and scale this down. Uh, my emitter is still there right in the middle and it's kind of just emitting from that one point. Um, so I'm going to emit from here. Um, this right here is my rigid object. So that's where it's like saying, hey, I'm going to collide right here, right? Um, and so I'm going to play now and see that fills up much faster. Oh, look at that. It's now flying right through my surface on the ground. You might notice this happens with your table if you're doing this on tabletop surface, um, because what you're gonna have to do, you wanna give that physical properties too. And so I'm gonna click on my plane here or your tablecloth. If you have a tablecloth on there, it probably already is set to a rigid object. Um, if not, you can always set it to a rigid object and you can also set your table to a rigid object as well and any other objects that you have on your table so that when these things kind of overflow, they'll bounce into them and react with them and, and have like an actual physical presence. So I'm going to take that and go to end cloth again and create um, a passive collider. I'm going to rewind this, let it overflow, see what happens. Now they're kind of bubbling out over each other, which is kind of weird and creepy. Um, and let's see what this looks like. 
and it's just turning into a big blobby mess, right? And so if I wanted them to have more spread among each other, then I could do that. I can go to my particles and I can go to, um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I can go to self collide with scale. I can have them self collide even more than what they already are and see how they kind of give themselves more space. They're kind of, it's almost like popcorn coming out now. Um, which is kind of cool. So playing around with this, um, you see now that I've given it, you know, different kind of um, material. It's just f overflowing with these blobbies. I, to me, they remind me of Orbeez. My kids are kind of obsessed with these things. Notice how much longer it's taking now for this to render out. Um, uh, I guess what I could do is change something in my in my render settings here i can make it i can see if it will render in like a hardware 2.0 and they won't let me do that it will let me do the regular but nothing shows up because i don't have any maya lights and so i'm going to change that and see what this does will that let me do just maya software but then my particles don't show that's a pity um so turtle um, I'm just going to stick with the Arnold render and go with go with that. So, um, you know, and you can give make sure that your other objects also have uh, materials as well. Um, that it gets really difficult to to select objects now, and so I can go add add a material to to this and make it into, I don't know, let's do another shader here, because it's easy just to find some presets. Um, what do I want this to be? Let's just make it um, car paint. And blue car paint is kind of cool. Oh, I saw one for um, the particles here. If we go into the stem, what if it was a bubble? I wonder what bubbles would look like. And just kind of play around and see what happens. Watch things as they explode, um, check out what your the bubbles are pretty cool. I need more materials for those bubbles to reflect off of an image in the background would be kind of cool too, but you can kind of see the iridescence of the, of the bubbles kind of, kind of coming out. Um, so play around with this, have fun with it. Um, see what kind of chaos you can make explode on your, on the scene here. Um, later what we'll get into is actually in, um, animating, you can animate um, your emitter and having it move. And when you have your emitter move, then your particles will move with it and have that physical presence as well. So you could be pouring these things out of one object and into another. So we'll play around with that later. Um, but have fun with this. Um, good luck with this. Take your time with it. If you notice your computer is getting a little bogged down, then scale things down a little bit maybe. Um, and see how it works out for you then. So we'll see you next time, guys, and have fun. Um, see what kind of interesting scenarios you can come up with um, with your with your objects and your particles, and um, and yeah, just it's a really cool thing. Uh, play around with materials too; it can get some really interesting effects out of it. Um, yeah, so there we go. See you next time.